Okay, Pask, just think about this. See this donut? Yes. Now imagine people could live on this donut. Yes. But the donut is flat. I thought you ran out of quarantine alcohol. I sure did. So after making the last video, I had a few ideas of where to go from there. I could pick something easy and doable with Earth's current technology, or I could take the previous structure and make it twice as f***ing bad. Wanna take a guess what I decided to do? I'm Vibby, and on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, the Alderson Disc. I decided to make it twice as f***ing bad, of course. Easy decision. The Alderson disc was named for late scientist Dan Alderson, who worked for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Although Alderson was not a science fiction writer himself, many authors credit him as the inspiration for their work. He was also a big gaming and sci-fi fanboy, and he created an imaginary planet called Wibble Fabwilda. He didn't write any novels about it or anything, he just came up with it for shits and giggles. An Alderson disc is basically a giant CD or DVD with a star in the middle. Humans would have a very limited habitable zone on this disc, with water freezing toward the outer edges and boiling away toward the inner edges, but people can live on either side of the disc without any problems thanks to a special kind of witchcraft called gravity. Look at this. Imagine how many Australians you could fit under there. Like at least 20. Well, you're not wrong. If you're already thinking, oh boy, I can see all of the problems with that kind of structure. Holy f you have no f***ing idea. For starters, Alderson discs would have to be unbelievably massive. This particular disc we're building is going to be around 3,000 times the mass of the sun. From the inner to the outer edge of the disc, the distance would be about 370 million miles, while the thickness of the disc would be somewhere around 3,000 miles. In order for the sun to sit comfortably in the middle without floating around too much, the disc would have to be more massive than the star itself. The sun may be thick, but the Alderson disc is like, oh lord, he coming. So how would you even get that much material to build this big son of a You're basically gonna have to eat the whole goddamn cosmic neighborhood. Gathering as much usable mass as possible is gonna be the key to making this happen. So everything several hundred light years around has gotta go. Except stars, of course. Good luck gathering anything from a giant ball of super hot plasma hellscape. Another way to get material would be to mine a molecular cloud, areas of space rich with matter where stars are born. Molecular clouds are mostly hydrogen gas, though, and good luck making a disc with that. Look, I'm holding a disc made with gas right now. You can't see it, but it's there. Don't question me. So by some miracle, you somehow managed to get all the stuff needed. Just gotta put it together into one big disc, right? Easy. Oh my god, it's physics. No physics. Don't mess this up, you son of a f so remember that donut I mentioned earlier? Thanks to gravity, the middle area of the disc would actually start pulling in the edge regions. You'd end up with less of a disc and more of a donut. Worst case scenario, the entire thing just collapses into a black hole. Which is pretty much like f***ing up so bad you break the universe itself. If you can somehow manage to keep your structure a flat plane, it's likely the sun's gravity might steal the atmosphere. So a wall hundreds of miles high... No, 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 not that kind of wall. Where is that coming from? Turn that off. As I was saying, a wall hundreds of miles high would need to be built around the central hole to keep the sun's gravity from stealing the atmosphere. Because the sun and the disk don't really move, there would be a perpetual sunset. Or sunrise if you're a morning person. Day and night cycles could happen, but that requires making the sun or the disk bob up and down, which is a whole nother potential disaster to figure out. As absolutely freaking bad as an Alderson disc sounds, it's probably not very likely to actually be made. Larry Niven, the guy from our last video who created the ring world, said that he really likes the idea of the Alderson disc, and here's the awful reason why. In his essay Bigger Than Worlds, Niven mentions that an Alderson disc would make a wonderful setting for a swords and sorcery kind of novel. Since the habitable zone for humans is relatively narrow, other areas of the disc could be occupied by aliens who prefer hotter or colder conditions. Over a long period of time, life forms would evolve to inhabit any empty regions. In other words, we could have actual monsters. And if civilization falls, it could get real fast. So you mean to tell me, we can make a real life war of underworld happen on an Alderson disc? Never mind, I don't want it anymore, get this f***ing sh** out of my face. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. This week's featured fan art is by PoppyJ21 on Instagram. Link to the artist page is in the description. And here's some comments from the last video. If this episode made you want to build a giant black hole space donut,
Please be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. If you'd like to support the channel, I have art commissions and a Ko-Fi page available. Buy me a coffee and I can make you a sketch as a way of saying thanks. Links to all that, as well as links to my social media, are in the description. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you real soon.